Hello and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Perhaps one of the most dangerous things that's occurred in the church these past 50 years is a lack of clarity when it comes to things Catholic. This ends up creating oceans of confusion among the faithful when what is said from pulpits or press releases or articles in diocesan or national publications is vague and open to interpretation. The end of the road effect is simple. Catholics end up unsure of this or that about the faith and begin to see the church teaching as malleable and not all that different from other religions. They lose their identity as Catholics because they lose their understanding of what Catholicism is. And when the Catholic identity is lost, game over. Which is why remarks by Chicago's Cardinal George and the ongoing drama of the annual Chicago Gay Pride Parade are causing Catholic blogs to light up. Without getting into too much background, the Cardinal had likened the idea of a rerouted gay parade passing in front of a Catholic church on a Sunday morning to KKK demonstrations of former days aimed at disrupting masses. Of course, this brought the homosexual groups out of the woodwork, crying that they'd been hurt and demanding an apology. At first, Cardinal George defended his comments and refused to acquiesce to their demands for an apology. Then, a few days later, he reversed himself and did in fact apologize, saying his comments were not meant to offend or hurt and were motivated by fear for the church being victimized by the demonstrations. But the issue that has now upset faithful Catholics beyond whether what he said actually did merit an apology is what he said immediately afterwards. Here's the relevant quote from the Chicago Tribune story. Quote, it, the church, does encourage the faithful to respect everyone. The question is, does respect mean that we have to change our teaching? That's an ongoing discussion, of course. I still go back to the fact that these are people we know and love and are part of our families. That's the most important point right now, end quote. Back up there just a minute and read that again. Does that mean that we have to change our teaching? That's an ongoing discussion, of course. Is it? Really? There's an ongoing discussion in the Catholic Church about whether or not we have to change our dogmatic, infallible teaching. Well, I and lots of other people never got that memo. Now, to be fair, I don't think that Cardinal George means to suggest that the Church's magisterial teaching is now open for discussion. But too many, many people who actively want to think that, they now have the ammo, and that includes people in and outside of the Church. That's a bombshell of a headline. Catholic Church reevaluates homosexuality. Talk about confusing the faithful. As a matter of fact, as this whole sorry episode has revealed, it's been nothing but a source of confusion from beginning to end. The Cardinal quite correctly pointed out a valid historical reality regarding the KKK and that group's treatment of the Catholic Church in America. The hatred spewing out of the homosexual activist camp about the Church has a very familiar ring to it. Then the Cardinal is opposed and digs in his heels, which he did, should have done because he was right. Then he reverses course and not only apologizes, where many feel an apology wasn't needed to begin with, but then goes a step further and suggests, or at least leaves the impression, that the church's teaching isn't settled, which of course it very much is. Of course, driving this back and forth, flip-flop, on again, off again, multiple clarification issued story is the politics of whining and hurt feelings. Every single time the truth is stated, as it was in this case as well, all that has to happen is someone has to start sniveling and crying and carry on about their hurt feelings, and the story automatically shifts from the truth to someone's hurt feelings. As members of the church keep playing this game, making apologies where none are really called for, it reduces the profile of the truth and makes it appear to become subjective and having no substance of its own. And then to come out and say, whatever the intention, that the truth of the teaching is open to discussion pretty much seals the deal for the enemies of the church. No wonder they all danced with glee in their multiple press releases saying, we consider the matter now closed. His apology was wonderful. For more on this story, please click on the link on this page. Why wouldn't they think it was wonderful? The Cardinal said the truth. They cried. He backed down and said, it's all up for discussion anyway. That's a grand slam for the church's enemies. And the next time this issue comes up, you can bet that this retreat and confusion will be used as another weapon against the church and her teachings. 
Saying the truth cannot be dependent on whether someone starts crying when you say it. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.